Hey everybody, just wanted to make a video today and talk about a, I guess you could call it a cold case. Um, I'm not sure what they would call it, but it's definitely a case um, that has been going on for 45 years now. Um, and I guess it has sort of kind of come to an end, unfortunately. Um, and I say unfortunately because I feel like the person who committed this crime was caught and then let go. Um, and of course I'm talking about the murder case of Martha Moxley. Uh, Martha Moxley was a 15 year old, uh, young girl from Greenwich, Connecticut. I think she was originally from, her and her family were originally from California and then moved to Connecticut. Um, and she was there, I think she lived there approximately about a year uh, and then she was murdered. So, um, all of this transpired, um, on October 30th, 1975. And, um, and just to let you guys know, um, I am no way related to or know the Moxleys or the Skakel family. Um, all of these opinions, um, and everything that I'm saying are strictly my own personal opinions. Um, and yeah, this case has bothered me for a long time. I would say since I was approximately 14, 15 years old, I think I became aware of this case because of a Lifetime, um, movie that was made about, uh, Martha. And I just found the case extremely disturbing. And I think that what is the most disturbing to me was how the case was handled. Um, not only was her murder um, gruesome and uh, extremely um, horrific, but it was just like the police just didn't handle it very well and the investigators... I know at one point in time, one of the police officers during one of the interviews said, well, it, it really just kind of wasn't handled well as far as a, a homicide or a murder case because we hadn't had a murder in, I think he said, either 30 or 40 years. It had been since they had had a murder in Greenwich, Connecticut. The Greenwich Police Department's first major murder investigation in almost 30 years began beneath a pine tree on the west side of the Moxley property. There, on the afternoon of October 31st, a neighbor had discovered the body of 15-year-old Martha, who had been missing since the night before. Steve Carroll, a 21-year veteran, was one of the first officers on the scene. They'd seen a lot of dead bodies, seen people blow their brains out and uh, drown and that kind of thing, but never homicide. From the beginning, the department's inexperience left its investigation open to criticism. Within minutes after Martha's body was discovered, a crowd of neighbors, reporters, and other policemen had descended on the Moxley's yard. Former LAPD detective Mark Furman, himself no stranger to controversial investigations, has written a book highly critical of how the Greenwich police handled this high-profile case the crime scene wasn't secure. A crime scene doesn't know if those are cop shoes or citizen shoes. You know, uh, 10 uniformed cops standing within 15 feet of the body is a contaminated, messed up, chaotic scene. Lacking the resources to handle a violent crime, the department had to call in the Connecticut State Medical Examiner. He was unable to make it to Greenwich Hospital to perform the autopsy until the following day and never viewed the murder scene itself. Because of the delay, the results could only narrow the time of death to a seven and a half hour period between 9.30 p.m. on October 30th and five the next morning. But to critics of the investigation, the department's biggest blunder was its inability, some would say its refusal, to accept that such a horrific crime could have been committed by one of Greenwich's own. By the afternoon of Martha Moxley's funeral, detectives had largely pieced together the events of the young girl's last night. And I just thought that that was interesting that he said that. 
I'm like, well, why does it matter how long it's been since there was a murder or a homicide? Um, what, what are you there for? Just, just looks? Um, I really didn't understand that statement at all. I don't think it should matter how long it's been since there's been a murder. You should always be ready and willing to investigate properly um, whether there's been a, a murder in two days or a hundred years. It doesn't matter to me. Um, also, I noticed that uh, several of the authorities, and I even think some of the people that were um, close to Martha, also said that, uh, you know, this case has been going on for a long time and it's costing the state of Connecticut a lot of money each time that they have a trial. And while that is true, I'm sure it does cost the state of Connecticut a lot of money. It costs all states a lot of money to um, have a trial. However, it wouldn't have cost the state as much money to keep having these trials if they had um, investigated Martha's murder properly. Uh, that's just how I see it. Um, I've watched several documentaries. I've watched the movie. Um, I've read articles and, you know, statements from different individuals that have been witnesses. Um, and I do think that, uh, and this is on my personal opinion only, I do think that they caught the person, uh, Michael Skagel. I do think he did have something to do with Martha's murder. Um, do I think that he had an accomplice? An accomplice? Um, possibly. Um, I just feel like, you know, the way that she was murdered was so brutal. And I do agree with Mark Furman. Mark Furman, in my opinion, did an amazing job on this case. I mean, he really, I've listened to him talk about this case and I agree a hundred percent. I mean, it was just grossly mishandled. Um, and the police were scared of the Skakel family and the Skakel family did their best to keep this covered up. Um, and here it is taken 45 years just to even come to a conclusion. And of course, you know, Michael went to prison, I think for approximately 10 or 11 years. Um, but you know, eventually it was overturned. So we still don't really have an answer from the state of Connecticut as to who really killed Martha Moxley. First they say, Michael did it, and he went to jail, and then they overturned it, which makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, but it's just, as a woman, and of course I was a young girl when, uh, when I found out about this case, um, and it happened several years, approximately nine, ten years before I was even born. But I think what is so disturbing about Martha Moxley's murder is... You know, because she was a young girl and because she didn't have as much money and her family didn't have as much money, I'm assuming, as the Skakel family, and because the Skakel family were related to the Kennedy family, they um, have this power and this poor young girl has been beaten and bludgeoned to death with a golf club. And people just kind of, it seemed to me at the beginning of the investigation just kind of shrugged it off like, you know, I mean, this is a very serious, serious crime. Um, and it was just sort of, at first, sort of like they were trying to sweep it under the rug. Um, and that's very disturbing to me as a, as a young woman, and especially when I was a teenager and I found out about that, because I'm thinking, what if that had been me? Or what if that was my best friend? Or, you know, I mean, it could happen to anybody. And not just because she was a woman, if it happened to a man, it would, and a young boy, it would be just as horrifying to me. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, her and her family, um, you know, they hadn't lived in Greenwich very long. And I think that, especially after her passing, her family, you know, obviously felt definitely like they were the, the odd family out, you know, um. So yeah, it's just a, a case that has been on my mind for years and years now, and here it is going on 45 years with this case, and I especially feel for Martha's mother, Dorothy, um, and her brother, John. I absolutely cannot imagine how it must feel to have to listen to 
the details of this case over and over and over and have to go to court as many times as they've had to do that. And, you know, they're such, they seem like very, very strong people. Um, and I just admire them for looking out for Martha all these years. And, you know, they've tried their best to figure out who killed her. And I, th I think that, um, her mother knows who, who killed her. And I agree with who she said she feels like murdered Martha. So, yes, yeah, so my prayers are with, um, Martha's family. And yeah, so that's just, you know, something that I wanted to talk about today. Um, so I hope everybody's having a good day and I will talk to you later. Bye. Kennedy cousin Michael Skakel will not be tried again for the 1975 murder of his teenage neighbor, Martha Moxley. He was convicted back in 2002 and served 11 years, but a judge overturned that conviction. Skakel has been out on a million dollars bond.